Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. I was having a conversation with uh, someone the other day about how they weave chain link fencing. How does it work? How do they make it? So I thought that'd be a great subject for today's video. So I went out and found a couple videos on how they weave chain link wire. One of them's a machine, a mechanized version. It's probably pretty similar with what you'd find here in the United States. Actually, this video is from the United States. A uh, little bit old, but I have to think the technology is still fairly similar. Now, in searching for this video, I came across a second video, which is actually overseas hand weaving chain link wire into rolls. I thought that was incredibly uh, interesting, and we will check it out following this video. Before we get into this, though, remember, if you find this content helpful or educational, it would mean the world to me if you gave it a like. It helps the channel. Completely free way of showing your support. Also, if you look below this video and the subscribe button is red, click that button, give the channel a subscribe. It lets YouTube know that we're consistently creating great content for you guys. And it would also mean a lot to us. With all that being said, let's check out uh, how we weave chain link wire. All right, so as you guys can see, the video is titled Burgandy, Burgandy, WVR 500 Chain Link Weaving Machine. So uh, I suppose this is probably a promotional video for the uh, machine itself. Check it out. So right off the bat is starting off with what looks like uh, just coiled wire. So it looks like it's already galvanized, which would mean this would be a pre-galvanized wire um, or galvanized before weaving. Certainly one way to do it. Um, one problem I've seen with galvanized before weaving uh, wire is typically where that wire is bent over, where it knuckles, whether it's at the ends or in the middle where those where the uh, wires are woven into each other. That makes sense. Anywhere it bends, typically that's where you start seeing rust. Uh, that galvanized uh, cracks right there and start showing you problems. But to each their own, I guess. The alternate would be galvanized after weaving. So they would weave this and then run the entire product through a bath of uh, hot galvanizing, um, usually zinc-based galvanizing. All right, so we just saw the strand coming in smooth. So in this uh, green portion, this green rectangle, it must be weaving it into the, uh, the diamond type patterns or half diamond patterns. You know, I've never seen one of these machines go. This is actually moving a little bit slower than I had kind of thought it would. I really, I guess I had imagined it would be more of a continual process. Still clipping right along. I don't mean to diminish the machine, I guess, but uh, taking a little bit longer than I thought it might. This side is going to be the twist. So this is knuckle twist, KT wire. So this is taking those two strands and then twisting them into each other. I don't know how to demonstrate that. I kind of like to see more. I hope that's where we're headed. I like to see more about how they're taking this smooth strand and uh, weaving it into that half diamond pattern. Okay, so this is the knuckle side of the knuckle twist. It's simply 
taking each one of those strands and bending them over uh, on themselves. Okay, that's interesting. So it looks like it's taking two strands uh, at the same time, I suppose, and weaving them into each other before weaving them into the fabric, which we only saw one strand of smooth come in, so maybe it's magic. I mean, it's very clearly two strands there. They're already making the diamond before it goes into the wire. There, there's probably another strand of smooth coming in somewhere else. There it is. So it's behind the machine. Not magic after all. Let's see what this is telling us. It's telling us 25 diamonds tall. It's telling us blade speed sets at 800, whatever that means. And then it gives you a picket count. So they've uh, run 113 pickets through uh, 211 sets. So... Obviously, that's probably not, I guess it's probably keeping total count, right? And then they're cutting it at the end to make it into rolls, maybe. Guys, looks like that's the video as far as uh, how this machine works. I would have liked to see how they um, how they cut that wire when the roll's done. Like, how does it keep track of fifty foot in a wire roll of wire? Now, we all know there's never actually fifty feet in the roll. Uh, be it would have been interesting to see, you know. So I would guess the two guys at the end of the process were. I uh, simply unweaving one of the strands and then uh, at fifty foot, but. It's, It'd be good to know like how they know where that 50 foot mark is. One thought here is I would like to shoot one of these videos. I'd like to go out to one of the manufacturers and actually see one of these in, uh, in production. I'd like to see like a manufacturer, like somewhere, you know, Southwestern wire, somewhere like that. Uh, see this done at scale. I think that would be incredibly interesting. So in the intro, I let you guys know that in searching for this video, I found a different video where they are actually, it's overseas where they're actually hand weaving rolls of chain link wire. Let's check that out. All right, so this video is titled, How to Make a Chain Link Fence, Handmade Chain Link Fence. So again, the, a bunch of smooth wire all stacked up, already galvanized. So this is another uh, galvanized before weaving uh, operation. That seems like a ton of smooth uh, smooth strand there it seems like a lot of wire All right, so it's pulling the smooth up through this pulley contraption through what looked like a set of tensioners, those rollers, uh, and then twisting around a central cord to make it into those uh, diamond patterns is what it appears like to me. That's interesting. So they've got a weight on the wire to try to keep tension, to keep it just from unspooling altogether. 
Look at how smooth the floor is like around the wire. This thing runs quite a lot, it seems like. So it looks like they're running it out. You know, it looks like 10 or 12 foot strands there, and he's just cutting it at a predetermined location. Be interesting to know how he knows exactly where to cut it. Things running incredibly fast. Okay, so that makes more sense because, like I said, it looked like he was running 10 or 12 foot strands out. So they were probably 12 foot and cutting them down to size maybe into six foot. Really, you could cut them into whichever sizes you like. OSHA would absolutely have a coronary watching something like this. So one point is, I guess, the end of that wire. So this was all galvanized before weaving. So the cuts, it don't look are, like are being coated. So you'd be concerned about rust showing up at either side of the cut ends. Just hand weaving it as as uh, as they go there, and that's crazy. knuckling it so a little less of the uh of like finish quality on the knuckling obviously and on the machine we saw that it was pretty consistent each and every weave these being handmade they're going to be a little less polished So you saw it have you had it on stakes at that one end. I'd almost bet there's probably stakes at the other end, driven roughly 50 feet apart. So they could take one long strand, stretch it out, know exactly where to cut it. Looks like there's the finished product, a 50-foot roll of 
what looks like might be 42 inch uh, chain link. Finished rolls ready to go out. It looks like so. It's it's interesting seeing the uh, the contrast from uh, one facility to the other, where the others were stacked neatly, everything was nice and tidy, and these are a little less so. Looks like maybe forty two inch, forty eight inch. There you have it, hand weaving. Uh, galvanized chain link wire overseas obviously uh, interesting to see him do it i've never seen it hand woven like that so i thought it was interesting if you guys thought it was interesting let me know in the comments below i always love hearing back from you guys and interacting with you guys in the chat as i can uh, but it's always good to uh, keep up with you guys there so if you got any thoughts or questions leave them in the comments below until next time i'm joe everest the fence expert reminding you the good fences make good neighbors